So in this video, we are going to have a look at how to clean the potentiometers in an analog mixing console. If you are new to this channel, my name is Per Moneo. And together with Irene, we are renovating a beautiful Soundtrax Jade, a 30 year old analog mixing console. We are having lots of problems with crackles and scratchiness from potentiometers and switches. In the previous video, we cleaned all the switches and all the connectors for the first channel strip. And today it's time for the potentiometers. And we are going to round up this video to have a listen and see if it actually makes any difference at all. So we'll start at the workbench. Okay, so I think we'll gonna give this one a try to get a little bit more support. There we go, maybe it could work. Yeah, so it's time to clean the potentiometers. Let's see how to do this because these ones are actually sealed. So they're not open like traditional potentiometers that even have a hole in the bottom where you can spray. These ones are totally sealed. And I got different advices. One advice was to take a drill, one millimeter drill, and drill a small hole in the top. But that don't feel comfortable to me. So maybe if we just spray on top, it may zip down here. I hope so. And I think we'll start with that anyway and see how it's going. We do just like with the switches, we just spray a little bit here. Put on a knob. And then just work it. Oh, you start to feel right away that it's going, getting so much smoother. And it's these first two that are the gain knobs that seems to have most problem. So we get them a little bit more love than the other ones. The gain knobs and the pan knobs. Oh <laughs> yeah, you can actually feel how it's making a difference. Yeah. And we're making a combination of small twists and turns. And the full movement. So just by the feeling the difference, I can tell that the dioxide finds its way down into the potentiometers, even though the potentiometer is sealed. Sealed potentiometers must overall be a good thing since they protect the potentiometers from, from dust and dirt. And yet it's possible to clean them with the oxide. It's fantastic. Probably looks like I'm using a lot of the oxide, but the truth is that I'm trying to be as fast as I possibly can, so this shouldn't be too much. But I mean, the bottle is full, so yeah, there comes a lot, so it's not that easy to control. Since it's basically the gain puts and the pan pots that are having problems, 
I had this idea to just clean those four pots. But I mean, when we add it, why not just go through them all? Then you're sure that all the pots have got the same treatment. As you can see, it's so much of the dioxide that are going down to the circuit board. Maybe it's okay, but um, it would feel a lot better if it <laughs> not would go on the circuit board. So let's see if we can protect it a little bit more. Maybe it's a good idea to use this plate. And we put the nuts in just to get some extra protection here. Maybe it's a bit overkill, but better safe than sorry. Also seal the gap for the switches with the tape. Okay, so this takes a lot of extra time, but I mean, when we're working on a aid, we want to give it as much love as we possibly can. Let's keep doing this. Okay, so now we're getting down to the two last potentiometers, which are the two pan knobs. And these ones have seem to be a bit crackly on some channels, so we're gonna give both of these some extra love and care. Here we go! That was the last potentiometer and they're all now good to go, clean and lubricated. Here we have them. And it feels like using this plate was a really good decision. It feels like it hasn't been dripping as much on the PCB board, so that seems to be the way to go. Yeah. Okay, so we have mounted the plate to be able to do a quick test and see if the dioxide made any difference. So let's plug it in. We cleaned the connectors for the ribbon cables and you can actually feel a difference when you put them back in. This feels really, really promising to me. Okay, the channel strip is back in and we are going to put a couple of the knobs back, uh, but no buttons. So this is just a quick check and see what we else have to work with on this channel. And of course the red ones are in the bottom, but I mean, it really doesn't matter what color we got here. Let's put black ones for the games we want to try out and yeah we got black one for the pants as well so finally it's time to check out the first cleaned channel to see if we can notice any difference at all okay so I'm putting sound into whoa we have sound into these two channels we immediately start to see that there's a lot more sound coming into this one 
and this is the clean channel, the 25. Let's listen to it. Okay, let's switch to something else that's a little bit more brutal. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Right off. Ah. Mm. Okay, so if we set the level to 0 dB here, and we have it at 0 dB here at the master fader, and 0 dB at the channel fader. And yet we have this one showing minus 4. Hmm, that's a bit weird, but we'll ignore that for now and just check out the channel, what it sounds like. And Okay. Wow. This sounds really promising. Okay. So let's try the pan pot. That was a problem with this one. Are you kidding me? No crackles in the pan pot. And I think we can work it a bit more. So, so it... Wow. Okay. We had a problem with that pan pot as well. Let's check it out. Let's see how to find out here how to switch it. Reverse. Here we go. Okay. And the pan pot works! I can't hear any crackles at all from this one. It's kind of hard to believe actually. Wow! Wow. Oh. So maybe this is the trick. A proper clean of each channel and we're <laughs> maybe pretty good to go. Could it be that easy? Wow. Okay, I know. There might be other problems as well <laughs> further down the line, but just this is such a it's such a great difference. It's unbelievable. <laughs> okay, let's try this. Just let's try to engage. Equalizer. No crackles. Wow. It's pretty unbelievable. What can I say? <laughs> I'm feeling happy. Okay, I really have to admit that I have some doubt about the Oxit. But you guys who convinced me, try the Oxit first. Okay, it seems like you were right and I was wrong. And I'm so happy about that. Whoa. I'm sure we will find out other things down the line when we start working it, but that is such a big progress. I can't believe it. 
Woo! Woohoo! <laughs> so today we had a big, big progress. It's such a difference. It's like day and night. I did a little bit more of testing on the first shell strip. And I could get some scratchiness from the pan pots if I provoked it. But the difference is night and day. So this actually is a great first step. The plan now is to clean a second channel. So that we can have two channels and check the levels and see the consistency and see what's happening. I also will keep the console on for a couple of days because it's been turned off for such a long time. So maybe that could do a little bit of trick as well. And I guess I need to tweak the knobs a little bit more just to get them going even more. So we're on the right track. And if you find this interesting, please hit the subscribe button so you get to follow what happened in the next episode. And as always, it's such a pleasure to see your comments down here. So please let me know what you think. Share your tips with us from your work with your console or just ask any question or just anything. It's so great to talk to you guys out there. So we'll be keep working on the console and take the second channel strip. And until we see each other in the next video, take care of yourself, make lots of great music and see you later.